So for doing this problem, let's read a bit about what happens to a light ray when it passes through the medium. So eventually we are going to, to derive this, uh, that optical path length due to a introduction of a medium is mu w, where w is the length of the medium and mu is the refractive index. So when the light ray passes through the medium, its optical path length is mu w, or you can say it's equivalent optical path length in free space for light ray one, which is passing through the medium is mu w. So we'll uh, come to that. First, let's see, first visualize, let's try to visualize what's happening. So we know that inside a medium, the velocity of light becomes C by mu. So outside is more, but inside the medium it is less. It is C by mu. And also frequency of light does not change when it goes into the medium. And we know V is F lambda. And if F is constant, that means V is proportional to lambda. So if V reduces, lambda will also reduce. So this is how the wave fronts will become. So they will become closer together. So now you can imagine that if we take these two points on these two rays, which were on the same phase before. And when this light passes through the medium, and this is outside the medium, so after some time, so this is let's say t is equal to zero. So after some time t is equal to t, this point of the of the ray will reach here but here it is traveling slow so this point would only would have reached here so if this slab was not there both these points would have reached here and here at the same time but because of introduction of the slab this is now lagging behind and this difference will continue in the ray both the rays. So when this reaches this point, this will be reaching, this would have reached here only. So you can see there one path difference is introduced between the two rays, which will cause some different kind of interference at the screen. So how much that is, that is not relevant because that depends on the lambda. But let's calculate what will be this path difference. So in t time, so we have taken a t time where this uh, this point just reaches out, just goes out of the slab. So inside the velocity is C by mu and width of the slab is W. So the time taken from for this point to reach here is W upon C by mu. So this distance becomes C times time taken by this. So C times T. So C times T so C times T is W upon C by mu. So this gives mu W. So this is the equivalent optical path length in free space for light ray one, which is passing through the medium. So why we are using the term equivalent? Because this point B is just acting as this point D because they are in the same phase. And where is this point located? It is located at a distance mu W. So equivalent optical path length in free space. So if, if you are talking about free space, then this point B is at a distance mu w. So that's why it is equivalent path length in free space. In reality, it is behind. But if we talk about equivalent optical path in free space, then that is mu w. Now, of course, for interference of screen, part difference between one and two. So what is the part difference? That is delta. So this delta is mu w minus w. So this length is mu w, this length is w. So this part difference is mu minus one into w. So let's use this concepts in the our actual problem now, which is YDSC due to film covering one slit. So now, okay, this angle looks quite big, but uh, in reality, this angle will be very small because the screen is very far away. But for clarity's sake, we have done it like this. So again, uh, let's say if uh, okay, let me just draw that. So we have two points which start at the same phase, and because of the slab, this will be a little bit behind, and this will be a little bit ahead. So now you can you will get in you you must be getting an intuitive feel that without the slab, the central maxima will be here, 
because these both these yellow points will reach here at the same time but because of introduction of a slab now you can see central maxima will be somewhere here at a distance y but let's talk about <coughs> the the general position y without bothering about the central maxima and try to find out how the interference occurs at this screen because of how it how the interference pattern changes because of introduction of the slab so we'll take both the rays and individually we'll write the optical path length so for ray 2 so for ray 2 that is completely in the free space so optical path length is simply the distance co so we are not talking bothering before the slits because uh, that before the slits the optical path length is same so only after the slits we are talking about so for ray 2 it is the distance co now for ray 1 so from a to o so optical path length is how much light has traveled in air so that is ao minus thickness of the slab that's w and its equivalent path length in air we have already seen previously so that is mu w so the optical path length because we are writing both of them as in air so optical path length in air for ray 1 becomes ao minus w plus mu w so this is because of light traveling in the medium so now when it reaches the point o due to the two rays we will say the part difference is co minus this thing so it is co minus ao minus w plus mu w so co minus ao plus mu minus 1 into w now co minus ao is the geometrical part difference and that we know for a given height y that uh, at that uh, geometrical part difference is dy by d where y is the location on screen and this is simply mu minus 1 into w so this is delta x which is the part difference so this is a very important equation which we have derived because this relates the part difference with the location on the screen so if this part difference is zero we will get our central maxima so you can see that in case of central maxima this geometrical part difference is same as the part difference because of the introduction of the slab and you can see that because mu is greater than 1 if delta x is 0 then y is positive which means the central maxima is above this central line now similarly if the part difference is n lambda we will get the various values of y which will be the where the constructive interference will occur if you put delta x as 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 that will be that will be for the destructive interference so all those positions of y will be the positions of destructive interference now for zero let's derive that quickly so if you put zero here you can see y will be mu minus 1w into capital d by d so this is the location of central maxima when you introduce a slab which is also the answer of our problem 5.76 all right